Welcome to an overview of the Makehaven Herms, which is heat exchanging, recirculating mash and fusion uh, brew setup. These are, uh, this system can handle up to about a 14 and a half, 15 gallon batch if you really wanted to push it. Personally, I like to run it at about 10 gallons. So overall in brewing, you have several stages. You have a first step of heating your water for your mash. You then have a mash stage, which is mixing the water and the grain. And then you have a boil stage. Lots of home brewers will use extract brew. Um, if you're familiar with that, that is the grain has already had the sugar extracted from it and put into a syrup, and you're mixing the water and that sugar. So you're jumping directly to the boil stage. So the heat exchanger, is up here in the hot liquor tank or the HLT and if you stick your head in there you can see the stainless steel coils that are at the bottom there. There is also a black bar which is the heating element. That is a heating element directly out of a um, hot water heater. So those coils come from lines that come out of this mash tun. So in the bottom of here, you'll see a perforated screen. The grain sits on that and water can drain through the grain bed, out the bottom, and then get pumped through those coils in this tank and then returned through what is called a sparge arm. Going through that tank will heat up this liquor when it's in here, which is turning into wort. Um, some other things to note about this system, uh, if you look inside here, you'll see a metal probe. That is a temperature probe, and there is a temperature probe in this tank, the mash tun. There is a temperature probe, this is what the outside of it looks like, going into the hot liquor tank. Um, there's also a temperature probe on the boil table down here at the bottom. You'll notice also this. There is a one of these in the hot liquor tank as well. It is a float valve. It's a safety feature that allows um, or keeps the heating element from turning on before water fully covers the heating element. You'll also notice this. This is a fill tube. It's a sensor that allows the machine to know how much li liquid is in the tank at any one time. Um, if you look closely at the bottom, I don't know if we can get it to do it again. Um, how this works is that there's an air hose connected to the back here, and it pumps air from an aquarium pump down this tube. Since the pressure is high enough to bubble out the bottom, it creates uh, an equilibrium between the pressure needed in this tube to drive air out that bottom and the level of water in this tank. As you can imagine, the level of water in the tank creates a certain height or a volume, a column of water, and the air needs to push down that column to bubble out the bottom. As the water increases, that column will get higher. Therefore, the pressure in that air line needs to be higher. There is a pressure sensor in that air supply line, which then causes the machine to understand exactly how much Liquid, liquid is in there. Here, I can show you the, the air pump manifold back here. Um, you can see a small aquarium air pump. Um, it's pretty quiet. If you touch it, you can feel a little bit of vibration. And you can see uh, maybe not the, the cleanest uh, piping job, but you can see the air manifold here, and you can see these inline pressure sensors. These are actually very precise. Um, between outside air, ambient air, and these, these pump lines that go up to the fill detection switches. Um, once you complete your mash, you'll recirculate. You might use a additional hot liquor to sparge, which then pumps it into the boil kettle, and you'll then boil, you'll recirc, and when you're done with your boil, you have one last step before you can pitch the yeast, and you might want to come around to the front to see this, is that um, before you can pitch the yeast, you have a boil that's running at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 
that will kill anything that's in here. It will also kill the yeast as you throw it in. So you need to bring that down to a more manageable 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 45 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on what type of yeast you're using. So you could just let it sit here for hours and it would cool down. Um, one advantage to having a setup like this is you have a counterflow beer chiller here. So this runs cold water from the tap through this outer jacket and then back out to the drain. And inside this coil is another coil that runs hot beer in the opposite direction and pumps it around and then returns it through one of these lines back into the tank. That causes the boiling wort, the sugar-filled, soon-to-be beer, it cools it much faster. Cooling it faster causes proteins that are left over in the beer to coagulate faster, and it's what's called a protein break. It causes your beer to be clearer, have less of a muddy flavor, and generally improve the quality. So um, once we get to that, we'll see that. Um, and I think that's a good overview of the Makehaven Herms brew system.